Today is our last week of our series, If Only I Had Known. If only I had known. And this, I mean, I gotta be honest, I'm sad that this series is coming to an end because there's so many other things that I want to get to. So we may come back to this series later on in the year, but if I could list off just a few other things that I wish I would have known that we aren't going to get to, there's five just off the top of my head. The first one is this, I wish I would have known that money matters, right? That, that money is a tool and a test and how you use it speaks about your heart more than your intentions. Money matters. I wish I would have known that. I wish I would have known to not let my highs be too high and not, my low, not let my lows be too low. I, I wish I would have known to control my emotions. We talked a little bit about that last week. This one I got right, so I had to be really careful before I share this one. I did this one really, really well. I wish I would have known who you marries the second most important decision you will ever make. The first one being making the Lord Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. They affect everything in your life. Your mental health, your happiness, feeling loved, how you get through tragedies, your success, how you raise children, and much more so. For all of you dating and engaged, you better take your time, choose wisely, and for all of you that are married, keep investing in your marriage. I wish I would have known time spent with those you love is way more valuable than money you will earn and make. I wish I would have known that. And I wish I would have known, and I'm still trying to learn this one, you can't control everything, but you serve a God that does. So give him control because he knows what he is doing. I wish I would know that. Um, I know it, but I gotta get it, right? But today I wanna talk to you about ski accidents and overalls. Ski accidents and overalls. And today I wanna talk to you about getting hurt by other people. Getting hurt, going through pain caused by other people, other organizations, other things. And here's what I wish I would have known, and it's our first point today. I wish I would have known that hurt and pain don't have to make me negative and turn me into a victim. I wish I would have known that hurt and pain don't have to turn me negative. I don't have to become a negative, skeptical person, and I don't have to develop a victim mentality. Most every one of us here and watching online, we have scars, right? Some of you right now, you're like, oh, I got scars, right? And you, and you've, you know the story behind your scars. You've had surgeries. You did something dumb, right? And it, you got injured and you have a scar as a result. I remember being really little um, and my mom was cooking in an electric skillet. How many of you remember that back in the 80s? Come on, somebody. And she was making smothered steak with gravy, hallelujah. And for some reason, my little tiny acorn brain decided to reach up. I don't know what I was thinking, if I was just gonna grab a piece of steak and start gnawing on it or what. But I put my hand up and it hits that electric skillet and it left a scar on this part of my hand. And I was like, Rah! right? Like there was a scar that was left. There was trauma, there was pain that was had. And I still remember it to this day. And you have trauma, you've been through pain, you've been hurt. And here's what I know about you and me. You can tell me the story about it like it just happened, right? Some of the trauma and some of the pain that we feel don't leave physical scars but they've left emotional scars. And some of you, I gotta tell you, because somebody's gonna come up and do this after service. You're a little too eager to show scars you shouldn't show to me. I'm like, hey, 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 like you keep that to yourself. Some secrets are best kept secrets, right? Like, and the question is, what do we do with these injuries? What do we do with the pain and what do we do the, with the hurt that we have experienced? I remember being a youth pastor and I got to go on a lot of ski trips at a, as a, at a certain church that I was a youth pastor at. And one of the first trips I got to go on was a ski trip with the college students, which I was a blast because they didn't need a whole lot of supervision. And we go skiing and while we go skiing, we're going on this black, I'm a pretty decent skier. And as we're going down, a guy is out of control and he takes my right leg out from behind me. Um, and in the process, I find this out later, I, I tear my MCL 
um, because this got my knees just like clock. Um, and so I had the fun of experience of laying on the mountain, trying to lay on a black that's like this without sliding, right? They put my skis up and the ski patrol gets to come in and put this goofy looking guy in a big little stretcher sled type thing that's not long enough, my feet are hanging out like going down the mountain like this. I'm like, if my knee wasn't hurt before, it is now, right? And I'm just being skied down like in the most humiliating way. You, I mean, you'd want to feel, I could not feel less of a man in that moment. As the little kids are like skiing by, what happened to him? You know, like all these ladies are spraying me with snow. What happened? You okay? I'm like, yes, I'm okay. I'm okay, right? This past week, I got to go skiing again. I'm with some buddies, went to Park City, Utah from Monday to Friday. Um, I, I still went skiing, had a blast, had a great time. And when I got around other people that were out of control, you know what I didn't do? I didn't go, ah! You know, I didn't freak out. I didn't just stop and say, what are you doing? You can't ski this mountain. You know, you're gonna hurt me. You're gonna injure me. No, I just learned to ski, learned to watch, right? Learned to stay out of their way, but I learned to enjoy myself and enjoy skiing. And some of us, we've been hurt. Some of us, we've experienced pain. And what has happened is it has, it has kept you from enjoying your life. And you become this skeptical, this negative person that's constantly waiting for the next shoe to fall. And you've developed a victim mentality. And you're like, well, it's just a matter of time till they hurt me too. It's just a matter of time till this, it looks promising, it looks good, but it's gonna go wrong, just give it time. And how do we deal with the pain and how do we deal with the hurt without it turning us negative? without it turning us into a critic and having a victim mentality. The Apostle Paul wrote a ton of different letters to the church and context is really important. Our text is gonna be found in Philippians. But Paul starts writing the church in Philippi and the book of Philippians, he is writing from a jail cell in Rome. And yet the book of Philippians is considered the book of joy. His context that he's writing is jail, yet the book and the letter is considered the book and the letter of joy. And in Corinthians, Paul writes in 2 Corinthians eleven twenty three 23 through 27, all that he's been through. And he says this, are they servants of Christ? I know I sound like a madman, but I have served him far more. I've worked harder, been put in prison more often, been whipped times without number, and faced death again and again. Five different times the Jewish leaders gave me 39 lashes. Three times I was beaten with rods. Some of you, this sounds like your childhood. Um, once I was stoned, not, not that. Um, three times I was shipwrecked. Once, this one blows my mind. Once I, was, I spent a whole night and day adrift at sea. That would scare the mess out of me. I've traveled on many long journeys. I have faced danger from rivers and from robbers. I have faced danger from my own people, the Jews, as well as from the Gentiles. I have faced danger in the cities, in the deserts, and on the seas. I have faced danger from men who claim to be believers but are not. I have worked hard and long, enduring many sleepless nights. I've been hungry and thirsty, and I've often gone without food. I have shivered in the cold without enough, clo enough clothing to keep me warm. And this is the context, this is the experience that Paul's life has been since he became a follower of Jesus Christ. And yet Paul writes this in the book of Philippians chapter two, verse 14, do everything without complaining and arguing. Whoa. Everything in the Greek means everything. Do everything without complaining and arguing. That means helping out at the house too when you get home from work. Do everything without, we could just spend all day there. He writes this in Philippians 3, 1. Whatever happens, my dear brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. I never get tired of telling you these things and I do it to safeguard your faith. Whatever happens, no matter the pain, no matter the hurt, no matter if you're shipwrecked, no matter if you're adrift at sea, rejoice in the Lord. Philippians 4.4, 4, always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. And all the pain, 
all the hurt, all the betrayal, people talking about him, people gossiping about him, people ruining his reputation and character. They called him cult leaders. They said all these nasty things, done all nasty, hurtful things to him. How did he come to a place where he can say whatever happens, rejoice. Do everything without complaining and griping and arguing. I'll say it again, rejoice in the Lord. How did he do it? It's found in Philippians chapter three. The, the way that you don't let your pain and your hurt turn you critical negative and into a victim is found in Philippians three, verse 13 through 14. It says this, no dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead, I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God through Christ Jesus is calling us. He didn't get hung up on his past, on all the things that went wrong. He didn't get consumed with all the people that did him wrong. He let go of the past. He let go of the hurt. He let go of the gossip. He let go of all the wrongdoing because he realized God still had things that were big and great ahead of him. And he was not going to be able to run his race with purpose in every step if he was busy looking behind him instead of looking at all the God had ahead of him. And some of you, you have been looking behind you for long enough. You have been a victim long enough. You have been angry long enough. You have been bitter. You have been critical. You have been a skeptic for long enough. And today is your day where you turn your gaze from what has happened to you in the past to all that God has for you today, right? It's your day where you turn what hurt you and wounded you and you let it go and you grab hold of what God has for you. So the question is this. How do we keep what hurt us, what caused us pain, from turning us into a negative person, into a critical person, into a victim? Three things today, and some of you are like, you have three more points, I got three more points. Hang on, first one is this, address the pain and hurt. Address the pain and the hurt. John 16, verse 33 says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect Peace, not temporary peace, perfect peace. In the world, you will have tribulation and distress and suffering, but be courageous. Be confident, be undaunted, be filled with joy. I have overcome the world. My conquest is accomplished and my victory is abiding. Jesus didn't say that you would not experience any troubles. He didn't say that you wouldn't have trials. And, and here's what I would tell you today too. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that God won't give you more than you can handle. But what it does say is he won't give you more than what he can handle. And that's what Jesus is saying. And that's the confidence. And that's how you can have a peace that is perfect today. Because he's saying this, hey, you're going to have times you feel overwhelmed. You're going to have times you get hurt. There's going to be times you're gossiped about. There's going to be times you feel burned. But take heart. Because I'm bigger than everything that you're ever going to go through. And if we don't address it, we can't treat it. If we don't admit it, things can't get Better. The danger of not addressing an open wound is that an open wound can get affected, infected very easily. It has a high risk, and if you don't address it and treat it properly, a wound that gets infected and is big enough and severe enough can spread and affect your whole entire body. And just like your physical body, if you don't dress, address a wound and hurt and pain that you are dealing with, the same thing goes for your emotional and spiritual life as well. If you don't address it, if you don't get real with it, it's going to affect other relationships. And what happens is we start bleeding on people who didn't cut us in the first place. And pain that you don't treat and address is transferred. You transfer it to other relationships, you start taking it out on your spouse when your spouse didn't do what your ex-spouse did. 
Your spouse didn't hurt you at work. Your spouse didn't betray you, but they're bearing the brunt of it. Why? Because you haven't addressed who hurt you and who caused the pain in the first place. You start being paranoid and you start being critical and negative and having a victim mentality when it comes to other friends other opportunities, other relationships. And here's how you know you haven't addressed things is that you start grouping people and things together. You start grouping people and things together. You don't wanna make new friends because new friends are just gonna hurt you like your old friends did. You've got hurt and pain and bitterness and a victim mentality that you haven't addressed. You don't wanna hang out with family anymore because family just will talk about you and betray you again. You don't wanna network and meet new people at work because work people just backbite and look out for number one. You don't wanna go to church because church people hurt you. That pastor hurt you. That pastor talked about you, didn't do you right. And here's what I will tell you. There's gonna be a lot of things in life that hurt you. There's gonna be a lot of things that you experience pain and you can't group it all together. Man, can I tell you, I have burned my mouth more times than I can even remember on pizza bagels and Totina's pizza rolls. But you know what this fat boy does? Those are, when they get around, I'm gobbling. I'm not, I'm not letting it cool down, that's for sissies. I've had brain freeze every time I eat a snow cone, but every summer I am down in some snow cones and giving myself brain freeze. I'm like, I knew it, I knew it, but I'm doing it anyways. And listen to me, you can't group everybody together or you're missing out on what God has for you and what he wants to do. And let me be real honest, on this point, I struggle, I get it. Because I don't want to admit somebody hurt me. I don't want to admit that their bad intentions, their gossip affected me because I feel like I'm letting them win. And there's a difference between having a victim mentality and pouting and addressing. And some of us, we need to address it because we're not getting any better. We need to address the pain and the hurt and the betrayal and the gossip because we're not getting any better. And Psalms has a promise to it. In Psalms 147, verse three, it says that God will heal the broken and hearted and bandage or bind up their wounds. And what is so great about the Lord we serve? He says that in your weakness, his strength is made perfect. He knows how to perfect his strength in your weakness, in your hurt, and in your pain. I love what C.S. Lewis said. He said, pain insists upon being attended to. God whispers to us in our pleasures, speaks in our conscience, but shouts in our pains. It is his megaphone to rouse a deaf world, and pain today has to be attended to. The next thing you do to not let what hurts you turn you is you have to forgive who hurt you. Some of you are like, I knew it, I knew it, you idiot. I knew you were gonna say forgive those who hurt you. We're leaving now, I'm turning you off. Some of you are like, I wish I was watching online right now. And because you knew it, you're tuning this out right now. It's like when you ask your spouse where they want to go eat, but you already suggested Mexican. You're not listening to one thing they said. You're not going to Zoe's. You're not going to Indian food. You're not having a Mediterranean thing. You're definitely not going to eat healthy. All you're thinking of is what Mexican restaurant you're going to while they're talking. That's what's happening right now. You gotta forgive those who hurt you and you're like, I'm not listening, I'm not listening. I'm tuning out until the next point. And you can tune me out, but, but hear me, listen to what Jesus said. Matthew chapter six, verse 14 through 15 says, if you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, your father will not forgive you, your sins. But Justin, no, there's no but to this. There's no exclusion to this. If you don't forgive, there's a blockade when it comes to your relationship with the Lord. And I know that's not popular, and I know that's not fun, but that's the truth of the scripture, and sometimes we need to hear the hard things instead of the fun things. And if you're hung up on all the wrong and on the bad, and all the pain and all the hurt, 
Man, you're stifling your relationship with Justin. I don't like what you're saying. Matthew 18, 21 through 22. Then Peter came and asked him, Lord, how often, how many times do I have to forgive someone who's a jerk, right? Who sins against me? Seven times? That sounds good to me, God. Let's go with seven. That's your number anyways. I didn't make that number. You made it. Like, we're not saying six. I know six, but seven? No, not seven times, Jesus replied, but 70 times seven. Jesus saying this. He wasn't saying, okay, keep count, Peter. <laughs> keep adding it up. No, he's saying, lose count. Lose count. And some of you are going, but, but I don't like the people that hurt me. Or this is talking about people that maybe they did it accidentally, maybe they didn't do it on purpose. I, I get what you're saying, but what about those who did it purposefully, intentionally, and they're still doing it? Luke 6, 27 through 28, but to those who are willing to listen, that's really applicable right now. <laughs> but to those who are willing to listen, I say, love your enemies. Do good do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you, who talk about you, who gossip about you. Pray for those who hurt you. Are you for, I showed up for this? You know what? You know what being an adult is a lot of times? Being an adult is doing the things you don't want to do. Being an adult is doing the things you don't want to do. We did baby dedication today. Daniel and JC, guess what? Lil Nolan's going to poop his diaper at some point today. All righty. So yeah, JC's like, already happened. In the middle of the night, it's going to happen. And you know what? No parent, if you're just being honest, no parent wants, oh, I just love changing the diaper. No, especially in the middle of the night. But you know what an adult is about doing? Doing what you don't want to do. When you're a little kid, get sick and they're able to get up out of the room and make it to the toilet and throw up, but they don't make it in time and they throw up on the chair all over the floor. Being an adult isn't delegating to your other kid that's not sick to clean it up. That's not, no. Being an adult is doing what you don't want to do. There are things in your life, doing the dishes. I don't want to do them, but being an adult is doing them because it needs to be done. I don't want to pay the bills, but paying the bills, you do it. Why? Because it's an adult and you got to do what you don't want to do. And this falls in the same category. You're never going to want to forgive somebody that hurts you. You're never going to feel your way to a place where you're like, okay, I feel like forgiving them for everything they said and everything they did, especially when they hurt your kids especially when they hurt your spouse, especially when everybody doesn't know the whole story because there's two stories to every side. But being an adult, Paul said it this way in 1 Corinthians 13, we talked about this last week. When I grew up, I put away childish things. And it's reasoning like a child to think, well, when I feel like it, I will forgive those who hurt me. No, you won't because you will never arrive at that point. Being an adult is doing what you don't want to do. And today, some of you, you don't want to hear this, but tune in. Forgiveness isn't saying that it's okay and it's all right with what they did to you. It's just releasing them from what they did so that it allows you to move on from what they did. And how you know if you still have unforgiveness in your life and you're still struggling, it doesn't mean that you're gonna forget what they did but you've moved on from it. You're not constantly talking about what they did. And if you're constantly talking about what they did, I got news for you. You're still hung up on what they did. And it can be part of your story, but it can't be your reality. And there's a big difference. I gotta move on. Last way that you don't let what hurts you turn you into negative, critical, victim mentality is you stop picking what you wanna wear and you become obedient to put on what you must wear. You stop picking what you wanna wear and be obedient to put on what you must wear. Casey and I, great marriage, awesome marriage, phenomenal spouse, outkicked my coverage, get it. Married out of my league, I get it. I know, you're right, I understand. And when we get ready, for the most part, I will ask Casey, I'll ask my girls, hey, does this match? Does he these things go together. Um, and you can probably tell when I didn't ask them, um, and it's pretty glaring obvious. Um, 
And, and we will ask, hey, do you like this? And she'll ask me if I like it. And then we ask this too. Is it appropriate? Novel idea, I know, crazy. Cra crazy, is it appropriate? Some of you, maybe you should ask that. But um, mm -hmm. it's just appropriate. So, so we go there, but there is one realm in my life, I don't care what she says, what my daughters say, I'm wearing them, and it is my Dickies overalls. These are mine. Nobody tries to take them in my household. And when I come out of the room in these, everybody rolls their eyes. They're like, oh, here's dad again, right? If I put these on and Casey's around, I look her in the eyes while I'm putting them on. I'm like, yeah, my Dickies overalls are coming out right now. It's happening. And the reason I'm not wearing them, some of you are like, why aren't you wearing them? It's too much, it's overload of the senses if I have these on. <laughs> I'm just telling you, it's too much. You're not there yet. But I don't, I, don't, I don't care about the input. I don't care what they say I should wear, what I shouldn't wear with this. I'll stop wearing T-shirts underneath this if they keep it up, right? I'm just gonna be like, <laughs> just overalls now, keep it up. Some of you, you have that family member. You're like, every family reunion, here comes Uncle John. Um, but some of us, can I tell you, we have a realm of overalls in our life where we know what we should do, but we don't care anyways. We're, this is gonna be the attitude I have it. This is gonna be the attitude I keep because Justin, I know what you're saying and I should forgive others. Man, I, I, I've gotta address it, but you don't understand. You don't know, you don't know what I've gone through and this is the attitude I'm gonna have, this is the attitude, because I'm just not there yet. And hear me, today it's not about what you wanna wear. It's not about what your default is, what your personality is. It's about as a follower of Christ, are you in charge of running your life and having overall realms of your life where you're not listening to the word of God, you're not listening to the leading of the Holy Spirit, or are you defaulting to his leading and what the word of God says? Because it's not about what you wanna wear, what, how you wanna act, how you wanna respond. Today it's about how does the word of God tell you to react tell you to respond and what attributes and what fruit of the Spirit does the Holy Spirit tell us to put on? And in Colossians chapter three, verse 12 through 15, Paul says this, since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must, everybody say that with me, you must clothe yourselves with tenderhearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience. Make allowance for each other's faults. And forgive anyone who offends you. Remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, clothe yourself with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony, and let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. So summarizing this, what are we supposed to put on and clothe ourselves with? Mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, making room for other people to be jerks, for other people's faults. Making room, because other people are gonna do you wrong and forgiving anyone who offends you. Man, Justin, that's so hard. Yeah. I'm not telling you it's gonna be easy today, but what I can tell you is it will be worth it. I came across this passage during my devotion and it's in Luke chapter five. It's the first recording that Luke has when Jesus meets Peter, James, and John. And Peter, James, and John are expert fishermen. They know what they're doing in a boat. They've got it. They've been out fishing all night and they've come up with nothing. They're exhausted. They've got nothing to show for all their efforts, all their energy, all the things that they knew to do, that they were trying to do, good things that they were trying to engage in, and they've got nothing. And it says this, when he had finished speaking, Jesus said to Simon, now go out to where it is deeper and let down your nets to catch some fish. Master, Simon replied, 
We worked hard all last night. And didn't catch a thing. We got nothing to show for all our time and energy and effort. But if you say so, man. But if you say so, I'll let the nets down again. And this time their nets were so full of fish, they began to tear. And hear me, some of you, you're here today, you're watching online and you're tired, you're hurt, you're broken. Because you've been trying and you've been trying all under your own power, all under your own energy. And the reality is that you've got nothing to show for it. And if you can come to the place where Peter said, but if you say so, but if you say, I'll do it your way, but if, if this is your God, if you say, not my kingdom come, not my will be done, but your kingdom come, your will be done. If you say so, I'll address the pain. I'll forgive others that hurt me and I will put on what I must put on instead of what I want to put on because that is a way to live that you come up and your life is overflowing with ministry from your biggest hurt. Your life is overflowing with his blessing, with his presence, that you won't have room enough to contain it. And that's what happened when Peter, James, and John started doing things Jesus's way instead of their own way. And what happened to them will happen to you if you can come to a place where you say, but if you say, so let's pray today. Lord, we love you and we thank you for today. And Lord, this is such a big, such a big area for us. And so I just pray that there would just be a moment we have with you right now. Because Lord, if I pretend I haven't been hurt, then maybe it's not real. If I, if I ignore the hurt, if I ignore the betrayal, if I ignore all the words that have been said, all the things that have been done, then, then maybe it won't affect me as much. But it still has an effect. So Lord, I pray today that we just get really honest with you.